Delivery Excellence from Emphasis, Mr. Deepak Dhar, Senior Director, Digital CX, India Business Leader, APAC and Sojati from Capgemini, Mr. Sundar Hariharan, Vice President and Head of Client Digital Delivery, Alorica from Alorica, Mr. Ram Mohan Natarajan, Senior Vice President, Business Transformation from Sedility, Mr. Karthar Saxena, Vice President from 24-7 AI, Mr. Satyam Lad, Product Management Director from Assetan, Mr. Uttaman Bhakti Krishnan, so sorry, Executive Vice President from Clear Touch, Mr. Ashto Sharma, Vice President and Sales Head, India Co.ai, and this entire panel is getting moderated by Mr. Murli Yala, Vice President, Cloud First Quality Engineering from Accenture in India. So we have the most powerful uh, industry uh, experts here, in the strongest in this field. And definitely it's going to be a great uh, uh, learning and experience shared by us. And uh, any questions or anything, feel free to towards the end of the conversation, we will take it. The topic uh, uh, you are already aware. So in the interest of time, I will try directly ask uh, the questions. But then before that, just quick one, one minute introduction, uh, a self introduction by the panelists will be great, starting from uh, sir. Hello. Yeah. Hello everyone, good afternoon. My name is Hemant Kanani. I work as a vice president uh, and manage uh, delivery excellence and transformation practice at Emphasis. I have 25 years of experience mainly into uh, consulting, business process management, and BPO advisories in tech as well as the process roles. Very happy to be here. Thank you. Um, hi, everyone. Good afternoon. I'm Satyam Lad. I have around 20 years of experience um, in the overall telecom industry. I have five patents with me. I have worked with Avaya for a quite long period of time. And currently, I'm working with Assertion. I had the engineering in the product management department. Hello. Uh, I'm Uttaman Bhaktikishnan. Um, 25 plus years experience. Mostly I'm a techie uh, by nature, but um, trying out the different hats, so entrepreneur and most probably like a serial entrepreneur, um, trying out different things. So coming out with a lot of experience on the AI and everything, and then now on the business development side of uh, cloud-based contact center solution called TCN. So um, one of the leader in the space. So um, I'll be here to happy to answer all the questions. And thank you very much. Hi, good afternoon. I'm Deepak Dhar. Uh, I'm the India business leader uh, for Digital Customer Experience Group uh, based out of Bangalore. I lead the overall uh, sales and order market strategy for uh, for customer experience across uh, North America and uh, India. Thank you. Thank you. Uh, hi, my name is Ram Mohan and I lead business transformation at Sagility. Um, prior to that, I was the head of business transformation at two other BPM companies. So, had a lot of experience of partnering with clients on their innovation journey. And as part of my role, read the, read the automation, analytics, and uh, app development teams. Thank you. Hi, everyone. Welcome to this forum. Thank you for coming. It's a pleasure to have uh, the audience as well as the experts that are sitting next to me. I'm Kartar Saxena. I lead the analytics and digital transformation practice at 247.ai, and I have 24 years of experience. Looking forward to sharing something else with you. Thank you. Hi, everyone. This is Ashutosh Sharma. I have around 11 years of, years of experience in SaaS products as well as the manufacturing industry. Uh, right now, I'm handling the India business for Core.ai, uh, basically focusing on how we can transform enterprises with the generative AI practices in a platformized and a productized manner. Thank you. Hi, everyone, and thank you to UBS Forums for this uh, panel discussion. My name is Sundar. I'm from Elorica, which is a BPO, uh, and uh, I have about 25 years of experience. I currently lead the client delivery from our Elorica digital initiatives, which we call Elorica IQ from Bangalore. And uh, I've worked across multiple industries, uh, and uh, we want to look forward to this. Uh, Fantastic session ahead. Thank you. Thank you all. Uh, that was a great intro, definitely. And uh, 
Uh, I'll start with uh, Ram sir. Uh, say, how is the technology uh, impacting business uh, in general? Right. So we have seen a lot of uh, change every three years uh, uh, growing. And how does this shape the BPO strategy overall? Probably that will set the context of the entire panel itself. Yeah. Sure. Yeah. Um, so let me maybe take a step back, right, and and talk about. Uh, the client strategy. I mean, a B, for a BPO to be successful, the client's business needs to be successful. And uh, what many a times, you know, BPMs have been doing historically is talk about driving efficiency improvement, right? So we go and talk to clients and say, I can take 20% cost out, 30% cost out. Okay? You know, not belittling it, it's, it's important. Uh, but in this age, you know, we've got our consulting friends talking in the market about zero admin cost, you know, so why do we even need to have admin cost? And with Gen AI, you know, things are starting to look around, um, you know, that it might happen and so. But if you look at it and, and because, uh, you know, we work largely with healthcare insurance companies, uh, if you look at their business model, what can really disrupt them is somebody coming into the market and changing the premiums completely, right? So, and, and many a times as BPM, we are focused on working on, say, claims as an example. But claims is actually... I would say a bit more downstream, right? So there are a lot of people who are healthy, not necessarily claiming, and they're actually good customers to have for uh, for uh, for a payer or an insurance company. So now, how do we start using data to analyze how people are healthy? And if you actually think about it, that data may not be with the payers. It could be with, for all you know, Garmin, could be with Apple. You know, there's a lot of health data available there, right? So now, how can BPM help uh, companies uh, on their strategy is where I think the focus is going to be in the future and I'm sure you'll hear a lot more on this from my co-panelists here. Thanks. Fantastic. Sir. That was enriching. Uh, next question is for Deepak Ghar. Uh, sir, uh, can we talk about can you take the yeah. what ways uh, has the BPO industry embraced particular technologies uh, in a solution to adapt to the new norms? Yeah, very, very good question, right? Uh, and as I said, see, um, uh, there, there's a there's a logical reason, right? If you go back, uh, traditionally, everything which was like backend processing, voice, and all that, we were known as BPO, right? So there's a reason why most of the organizations have re-Christianed it to BPM. Okay, so it it has that. Apart from whatever we do from an operation standpoint, it has to have that, you know, management layer as well. And to do that, um, it has to be an intelligent service, right? Gone are the, the, the days where a client will just ask you for run-of-the-mill operations, you know. You'll have to get in some, some levers where you can show your skin in the game as well. So automation has always uh, been there last five, seven, eight years, uh, you know, back-end processing being automation. But what is the what is the next thing, right? As I've also uh, spoken in my um, you know conversation earlier in the day, it's about being you know uh, doing hyper automation, right? Uh, or smart automation. How do you leverage you know getting the right uh, insights from whatever whatever automation levers you get? That is one. And then uh, you will have to add a tinge of AI ML algorithms on top of it to make it smart. You know, while while your mundane task can still get automated, but are you really getting or are you able to monetize uh, uh, that uh, insights or whatever automation uh, you are benefiting? Probably the answer is no. So you'll have to see how uh, you can use it uh, smartly. Uh, Gen AI again, very hot topic. How do you generate uh, content? I mean, it's a it's a dignified way of. I mean, we have been doing AI ML, but yeah, Gen AI is how do you generate the content? Or, you know, from it. Uh, uh, blockchain, uh, metaverse, I think probably next few years we'll also see people uh, buying things in metaverse using NFTs, crypto. So again, a very, very uh, hot topic uh, on uh, how do we leverage AR, VR. Uh, at least for one of my clients in, in US, um, we did this uh, entire training uh, simulation for, uh, for them using AR uh, mixed reality kind of solutions. So, you know, as, a, as an organization or as a, uh, as a company which provides service, you'll have to think of all these innovative ways of how digital can help uh, clients scale up. 
and while automation being there, but you need to be smart. So you need to have smart automation and you need to be hyper, uh, you know, you need to get it at a hyper personalization level. So do these two things with a tinge of AI, ML, Gen AI, Metaverse, uh, probably even blockchain, I would say are the key, probably for the next four to five years are the key technology parameters which can help BPO, sorry, BPM organization scale up. Thank Fantastic. You. So metaverse, that's really cool. I mean, like, what is it, right? So can you explain a little bit more? How has it been used? In the industry? I mean, see, um, so I've been talking to a few clients, right? Uh, luxury, uh, luxury brands, uh, high, you know, high-end retail brands and all that, right? Okay. Okay. Um, so it's it's a it's a it's a digital world, right? Uh, wherein, uh, for example, I remember in COVID uh, we had done something. Uh, we had enabled e-commerce channels for one of the luxury brands in in Europe, yeah. wherein in metaverse you could do group shopping, right? My avatar and your avatar, or probably anyone who's sitting here, can go to metaverse, talk to each other, and buy using NFTs, you know, uh, non-fungible uh, tokens. So. You know, it's I wouldn't say it's matured to that scale but it, it's picking up and it's and you know I'll, let me put it this way uh, it's something which as an organization you need to pick up otherwise it'll be too late for you to catch the bus yeah, so uh, things are still evolving <laughs> from that standpoint but yes many of the organizations are looking at you know metaverse your 3d avatars even for chat right yeah. uh, voice chat and all that you 3d avatars can actually talk it will actually you know, resemble a human voice as we, as we as we have seen. But yeah, definitely the next uh, few buzz buzz buzzwords to look at. Well, thank you so much. At Accenture, we have uh, this experience uh, for all the freshers who join uh, first time, right? So they go through this metaverse. The onboarding process itself is absolutely, a metaverse. Absolutely, absolutely. It's, it's it's very good. Thank you so much. Thank you. The next question is to Uttaman sir. Uh, can you please talk about the key technology trends that you believe have the most potential to re create real value? Yeah. Maybe you can use this. Yeah, yeah I think this is better. Uh, yeah, so even today's morning session also, I talked a little bit about um, what a technology uh, can do and uh, how to look at technology from the BPO's perspective. That's more uh, right way of putting it. So um, I'll, I'll give a few examples. I think that, that that would be a better way for you to be able to easily understand. So I, I already explained one of the example where we are able to double the productivity for the agents for one of our customers recently. So, um, so now they are seeing like a potential for enabling their agents to do a lot more with the same time, with the same space, and with the same infrastructure. Uh, meaning, like, you know, this is the way to look at, right? Because if you don't look at it this way, the technology, uh, you, are, you are missing out something, right? Um, because there is only a limited way of cutting the cost, as I said earlier. Uh, there is only limited way of, like, you know, uh, doing other mimics or like the gimmicks that that is going to get you far but it is never going to be enough for you to get to the end goal of like you know, being competitive and like you know be able to provide everything because if you think about it um, right now if you want to buy a product um, any product for that matter you have thousands of choices compared to uh, earlier like you know, earlier if you want to buy a car uh, probably the question would be what color Guess what? Because there were not too many cars to buy. Either you are buying Ambassador or a Premier Badmani. So what color was the first question was coming out for the customers in the olden days? Not what car. Now the color is there, but there is like literally hundreds of options, right? And like, you know, what features, like how many seats you want, like, you, know, you want an SUV, you want a car, like, you know, you want a two-door, or like, you know, what do you want, like, off-road, or like, you know, um, what terrain you want to drive in. So look at that. So how do you compete? How do you make yourself differentiate from the other competitors is not by your product alone, because there are 
identical product or available thousand other choices unless you have a better way of giving a better customer experience you are not going to be able to give a unique value for your customers which means customers are not going to be able to recognize you or remember you so the ppos are sitting in this the sweet spot of making this happen right giving the best customer experience when a customer calls or when a customer is trying to resolve one of their problems we are the one enabling that and making sure our end customer brand is being held at high realm or they regard our end customer as a best brand like you know if you go to apple why would you go to apple it is simple to use it is secure and it is minimalistic nothing more what is not there in a google phone that like you know is there on the apple it is all the same why would you pick this versus that i'm not talking google is like you know lower or apple is higher that is not my point my point is google has its own unique selling points so you have to give that customer experience that customer experience comes in a lot of different ways and one of the major ways it come out, it is going to come out and it is going to grow in larger in the future is through ppos and the ppos have to take advantage of that and be able to be the big key differentiator so your end customers are looking at you like you know if big customers like a ge or like you know somebody is looking to like you know outsource you got to give that kind of experience maybe you you gave that experience in one of your current customers and somebody experienced that could be a airline could be like in a shopping cart or anywhere they could experience and they can ask for your reference and come to your door you don't have to go to them if you do everything in the right way and give that the customer experience that customer experience can happen if you do the right technology the right way and the right mix so you, you should be able to understand that and do that so that, that, that's that's exactly what i want to highlight here fantastic i truly uh, you know agree with you on the customer experience but uh, you know it it, it it keeps like an uh, apple fan to be locked with the apple devices that's that's pretty much a very good example which you quoted and it's known to the world thank you sir absolutely thank you yeah. so next we will go to hemant uh, so uh, can you share uh, a little more use cases right where technology transformation levers have been significantly uh, improved uh, improved with respect to efficiency and quality sure. yeah thank you thank you. so uh, as all of us know here we are all from the industry and a lot of experiences out there uh, like us at emphasis uh, i'm sure everybody faces this challenge so the biggest challenge today we face is that we are forced to contractually agree on what will be transformed and we are doing this at a stage where we do not have any insight on the customer's process but we are estimating right and we do some estimation based on something i don't know what we use and if you ask me what did you use in your last deal that you won i would say gut feeling right there's nothing else i can use the point i'm trying to make is that we agree on a uh, large size of transformation and then we believe that we have suites of so many technologies available something somewhere we will use and get there because what's most important is to win the deal but what i want to highlight here is that if we focus uh, rightly on the process or anything that we have learned from the past customers and fit right proportion of the uh, levers that are available we can still make a big difference and i'm going to give you an example of a customer uh, that is with us uh, 15 years we are all green when it comes to any Uh, parameters or any uh, SLAs on there, so we practically need to do nothing. But the only thing that they have put in the catch is that year on year we still give them a fee, which is uh, equivalent to a transformation. So here, what we did is it's a it's a large, very large global uh, uh, broker dealer uh, investment banking bank in the US, and uh, their process of account opening. And here we're not talking about a saving bank account, but a, a HNI or high net worth individual accounts. Each account means. millions of dollars out here so time to open that account is very significant it impacts your aum directly so we did a simple process simulation and found out some of the process bottlenecks and simply applied all the technology that we are talking about today right so wherever we could apply uh, analytics wherever we could apply a predictive analytics wherever we can uh, go to sentimental analytics 
on, on all the facets of the process. And the outcome is uh, that we, uh, the bank used to open 85% of their uh, accounts by signing physical documents. And physical document signing is still a must when it comes to any investment bank because it's a contract. But now it is that the major part of it is done, only 35% is, is process. Uh, I mean, sorry, the manual process. Everything else is digitized and all the levers possible that you heard today are used, but in small, small pockets in the right way to keep the cost low because again, we are BPO. I can't say that I've got money and you know, here is what I'll do for you. Uh, and the second thing we changed is that the, the NIGO, if you've heard of, not in good order, which is a very simple term used in BPO for smallest to the biggest process. But like I said, here impact is huge. So we reduced their not in good orders from 65% to right now 27%. And what I'm talking about has taken us two years from all the changes that we are doing and we are still in the game. Now what's most important is this pockets of transformation keeps us engaged with them. And remember, remember there's nothing here for me as a BPO company. It is not reducing my cost. It is not giving me more revenue. But all I'm doing is impacting the customer's life so that I'm still in the game constantly because anyway, my SLAs are nice and obviously my revenue is very, very large in this case, right? So that's yeah. one example. The other example I'll give is, uh, uh, again, another investment banking uh, firm in the US. Uh, DOL, Department of Labor, required that they change or update the DAML requirements for money laundering. The law came hard and it uh, estimated to be changed in three years while government had still given them five years. But again, we used uh, all the different small to large size uh, tools. Uh, the, the key point here was that we used uh, AI and ML combinations and wrote kind of an algorithm that helps an agent on its screen to focus upon some of the uh, four or five key things that are required to be audited and others rule based automatically, uh, whichever can be green uh, went off. Now again, benefits as we, my question, I mean, your question was specifically on the numbers. The benefit here was that it would have taken uh, with X, and I don't want to share the number of employees out here for whatever reason, right? So X amount of employee it would have taken us uh, to do this for three years. We finished it in eight months with simply 40% of the employees just because of the available technology and use of it in the uh, right way. So of course, again, it helps us, helps the customers in the right way. Fantastic. So, thank thank you. you so much for sharing those numbers. You know, we heard it. <laughs> so next question is to uh, Qatar Saksin. So I, I think we have heard a lot of strategies and you know, things like that. Now let's get into the challenges. Right, so sir, uh, the question to you is uh, specific to the agent workspace, right, based on RPA or AI infusion and or data analytics feeding into the agent side of the story. How are we making them uh, more smarter and help uh, the overall ecosystem grow? Thank you for the question. Um, I think we are all familiar with the term customer is king. And what it ends up doing is the agent is a pauper. Because in this ecosystem, the agents and the people who are supporting the customer are always second uh, level citizens. That's always been the case. All the technology, all the innovation that has happened over the years has been of how do I make the customer feel better, get them natural language, get them innovation, get them bots. What does the agent get? They get the same console, they work on the same interface, they continue to support the same systems. And I'm excited about you know metaverse and video chat and stuff that is coming, but 99% of all interactions that happen today are still voice and chat, or digital and voice. And they are still happening with the same old interfaces. Now, how has innovation come in? It's not as if they have been away from innovation. There is innovation coming in. But the way people have thought about that is, how do I get the agent to serve more and more customers in the easiest way possible, in the smartest or the fastest way possible? In the equation of doing that, they have actually made the agents dumber. And I'll, I'm, I'm throwing this out there, so I'll explain what I'm saying as well. Um, you have bots becoming smarter most of the common interactions going away. Agents are getting to deal with more and more complex interactions. But what's happening is the agents are actually being told now to follow a script. And those scripts, we have agent recommendation tools that are coming in saying that, hey, just say this. So the agent, instead of having to use their brain, they're just actually saying, okay, this is the best one, I think, I'll just go and send this. 
this is a, an approach that a lot of customers have taken or clients have taken where they're saying, I know my process, I know my customers, I'll just tell them that. And what's happening is this is working for some people, but a lot of other customers or clients are getting back, are you a robot? Are you human? Are you even real? And that's unfortunate that that's the experience that customers are getting into because it's just becoming very monotonous, very robotic. What I see happening today in the agent eco space is, is very interesting. They're actually working on technology to make the agent smarter, making them more context aware, providing information to the agent which will help them not only after the fact, which is what typically today we do, right? In the QA processes, hey, you did this wrong, this wrong, this wrong in these five interactions, fix it. Nobody told me while I was doing that. If you had told me when I was doing that thing, I would have corrected that right away. And that's the space that I'm excited about. That's the space I see growing quite rapidly, which is making the customer uh, experience being better by making the agents more aware of what's happening. And apart from context awareness, generative AI providing uh, modified responses, not the same monotonous across the space, will kind of complement the entire space to make sure that the agents are now empowered to do the right things, are getting the support of generative AI to give different flavors of what they think is the persona of the customer that will meet the needs of the customer. And that is where I see the space overall evolving. So we're not there yet, but uh, there is work that is happening and I'm very excited about Definitely. it. Definitely. Thank you so much. And then he has brought out the emotional intelligence aspect, which AIs don't really worry about, but there are analytics which talks about caring and understanding. Let's say you know, you're doing a banking transaction, suddenly you realize you're talking to a bot, not a human. Like, oh, I was yelling earlier. Was it noted by this bot? Right? So those emotional intelligence aspects and all is yet to grow and probably that's where the market will do much you know, importance in the coming future. Thank you so much, sir. Uh, next question is to Sundar. Uh, are there any specific steps or uh, best practices you would recommend for crafting and implementing a digital age strategy that ensures tactical long-term uh, benefits, competitiveness, maybe? Thank you. So, uh, you know, one of the uh, analogy I'm trying to take is from the recent uh, last year, the World Cup that happened, Football World Cup. Right, sir. Um, the final was, of course, the most interesting match, probably one of the best World Cup finals ever. But there was a very interesting match between Brazil and uh, Croatia, <coughs> where you had the flair of the Brazilian team um, against the defense of the uh, Croatian team, and ultimately Croatia won. Um, and uh, Brazil were knocked out in spite of all the flair that they had. Uh, if you look at the BPM evolution or the BPO BPM evolution in the last 20, 30, 40 years uh, that it is, has been uh, prevalent, um, BPOs and BPMs have been constantly defending. Um, they have been defending cost. They have been trying to, um, you know, play into the transformation space more from productivity and cost save perspective. Um, and uh, you know, with uh, the advent of the digital technologies post-COVID and the sudden uh, release of, uh, you know, the, the technologies that are on offer and how AI has kind of really uh, explosively kind of get got into the market, uh, BPOs and BPMs are starting to force themselves to adopt. But traditionally, they are not technology-driven companies. They are people and process driven companies. Um, uh, so, you know, uh, from a strategy perspective, uh, keeping that in mind, uh, you, you get to hear a lot of terms, uh, um, you know, uh, that are coming into the market, Gen AI, then, you know, AI truism, there are these Gartner reports and McKinsey reports, et cetera, which gives a lot of technology trends. Uh, word of caution and advice for BPMs and BPOs is to start thinking of what is their core model. Uh, they are ultimately serving the customer. There is technology on offer which, uh, you know, you need to buy into. But every technology and every technology trend is not something that the BPO or the BPM is to buy into. You probably would rely on your customers to take those strategies and be able to better serve them 
by using your talent pool to adapt to those processes and those technologies as they evolve um, and uh, use them to better effect. Um, because, you know, you can't really, uh, each customer, each process and the ultimate end client that you're dealing with um, are going to come with different strategies. Some are focused on revenue growth, some are focused on cost saving, some are focused on probably compliance and risk, um, and uh, some are really focused on customer experience. So your digital arm of the BPO or the technology arm of the BPO has to adapt, understand how to put things in place to, you know, uh, serve the organization strategy, which is the BPO organization strategy. But at the same time, we have the ability to expand on client requirements and be able to provide grind the best technology and services which the client needs in the most efficient and able manner to get uh, best value for money. Thank um, you. That's, that's probably uh, the sum and substance of it. Interesting. Next question is to Anuj. Uh, there's a lot of buzz, right, around AI, cloud computing. So what do you think, sir, uh, the outcomes of the business would be? Anuj. Sorry, Ashutosh. No, Anuj. Sorry, Anuj Bala. We missed him? All right. I'll skip that question then. Uh, Ashutosh, I will ask you my sure. favorite question. Uh, conversational AI chatbots, right? So, <coughs> so these LLMs uh, are being invented and then there's a way uh, that things are going on. Even my mobile has AI camera, it seems. Uh, it's not perfect, right? So suddenly, uh, if I take a picture of my family, for a three-year-old also, it adds lipstick. Is it appropriate? No. Is it not being trained well? So always we have a challenge. So which platform should I choose and so on? So given the context and all these things, so uh, how can this uh, benef benefit to quantify uh, you know, with some use case? It will be good, sir. OK, so quantification, of course, uh, it's it's similar to what we do in a, in any kind of a VPM scenario today. So the standard matrix would be: can we reduce the average handling time? Can we basically help increase the agent productivity by X percent? And maybe can we handle the containment of the calls at a certain point, uh, like very well better than the existing process? So the matrix remains the same. But I think one of the major things that generative AI brings along, or LLMs bring along, uh, bring along, is the consolidation of a lot of processes together and giving them that kind of a generative intelligence which was really not there. And I would say that it doesn't really start just from after deploying the whole thing, the, deploying the whole platform for delivering this, uh, these use case results. It starts right from the preparation for that deployment, like right from thinking aloud the kind of use cases that will be there. And then how fast can we go live with those use cases? That kind of a go live time which typically in this industry has been like three to six months as well for complex deployments. This has be, is being drastically brought down. So right from that point, we can assume that the kind of savings or with faster go to market with which generative AI allows you to uh, basically accomplish now, that is where the savings start. Of course, after that, the training now with the, with the complexities of synthetic data plus the original data with generative AI, if you feed it to a right system and then pass it through layers of uh, LLMs, it really refines the kind of uh, data strategy that you have. And again, no matter how much we talk about AI, if your data is not in the right shape, it will not deliver those results. So now this kind of, these kind of generative AI technologies are also helping you refine your data, aggregate them in a single uh, layer, and then basically develop use cases on top of that very simply. So the kind of impact areas, I would say, would remain the same, but achieving those results becomes easier. Uh, your containment rates, of course, will be higher because now there are tens of LLMs stacked together. Uh, earlier, there was just a one NLP layer or maybe a couple of NLP layers. One was on the speed side, another was on the intent side. But it's no more like that. It is, and there is an emotional layer also now. There is a layer for understanding your processes also, and then the results are coming out. So this is where the, the additional impacts of containment rates or additional impact of average handling time going down or maybe your agent being able to handle more calls in a day, that is where it, it basically translates into.
Thank you so much. Yeah. So, with this, I think we have come to a conclusion. But then, if any of the panelists like to uh, do a closing uh, uh, remark on the overall theme. Okay. So I, I, if if you don't mind, I can go. Yeah. Go ahead. Yeah. Please. <laughs> So uh, I always tell this uh, to my colleagues and my customers and whoever I meet. Um, I, I believe in one thing. Um, if you see yourself as a service provider, if you see yourself as a manpower provider, uh, the game is over. Um, you have to move on. Okay. So meaning we are not in the business of providing manpower, we are not in the business of providing customer service or uh, just taking out some calls and answering some calls. We are not there. We are done with that. We are past that. We are in the business of giving a best customer experience on behalf of our customers. You got to believe in this and you got to pitch in this way and that is how you have to approach your business prospects, your existing customers. That is exactly how you have to talk. Because I, I always hear this, we are getting cash crunch and we got to cut costs and we are cutting costs on the BPO all the time. Why? You don't want to cut cost on the, your best customer experience. If you cut cost on your customer experience, you are not going to be in the business in few years. This is not for us, this is for your end customers. You got to be bold enough to give this uh, message out to your customer because BPO is not a service industry anymore. BPO is moving on to the better or best position in any companies uh, in the history because now we hold the major stake in how we are going to help our customer differentiate themselves from others by giving best customer experience. So let's keep that in mind and like you know, use the right technologies and apply the right uh, like you know uh, resources and you will be successful and we all will be successful. Thank you. Thank you so much, uh, Heman. For the people who don't know him, right? So how many of you have given GRE TOEFL exams in, in your days? Okay, great, fantastic. The score which we get, how accurate is it, right? We had a doubt. No, I did my best. It didn't show me the right results. The scoring algorithms and all, he has worked those days. Thank you so much and it's a privilege. Yeah, it was 20 years back. <laughs> yeah. all, the, all the panelists have some good, fantastic stories uh, to talk to and connect with. Please uh, use the forum, close the session. Thank you so much. Thank you. Thank you.